today's matchup. BBQ Olivers. Kongdu Monsters. SK Telecom T1 MVP Beginning of the end 2018 League of Legends Champions Korea Spring Split Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to LCK Spring 2018. Somehow we've made it to 200 games. First game today of our first matchup will mark that 200th game, and that will be, Papa Smithy, your 200th game that you've cast. I did some quick math about how many hours that was, and I regretted it, Atlas. So you we'll, did. There was we'll a certain the... movie that's a funny reference. We yeah. can talk about that a little bit later. That, that's one we'll hold, because today, <laughs> you look at the matches BBQ versus Kongdu Monster, yeah. obviously, teams that are not going to be in the top five. They're not going to be playing in the postseason in a good way, at least. And on the other side, we have SKT versus MVP that, again, on paper, should be SKT picking up a 2-0. But it's actually all very important. Today, oh, we yes. will decide something, OGN Legion. If you're joining us for the entire broadcast, we will find out who the second team to be in relegations will be. We know Kongdu Monster will be there. If BBQ beat Kongdu, MVP have to beat SKT. And also... If SKT lose, they're out of playoffs. So there's a lot to happen. Yep. And that's the exciting thing when we're only three match days, including today, away from the end of the season. Every match means something along the way. And right now, we are no closer to knowing who will join Kongdu Monster in the bottom two. Yeah, and every match for SKT is important as well. So that second series is crazy as far as those playoff implications are concerned. But in our first series, it's all about who's going to stay in the LCK. And I think a lot of our hearts are telling us that it is going to be BBQ because it feels like they may have been on a little bit of a better run. Their last two losses were against our second and third place teams in KT Rolster and Afrika Freaks, as you can see right now. But we're starting at the very bottom. BBQ Olivers are just trying to get their way up towards MVP. MVP will be difficult, and MVP also have uh, seen a little bit of a performance enhancement towards the end of the split. So it will be neck and neck. MVP really wanted to take that trap game from SKT and get them out of the playoff contention. Yeah, if we were, if we were able to highlight three teams, KSV, Rox, and SKT are the big ones to talk about because yep. it is the battle. The last two playoff spots will zoom in on BBQ and Kongdu. If BBQ win, when it comes to match score, they're done with their season, by the way. It's their last match of the season. They will be at six wins. MVP are going to be at negative 10 to start off. If they lose to SKT, they're going to move below BBQ in their final series and thus will join Kongdu Monster. If Kongdu wins, well, it condemns BBQ to go down to relegations with them. A lot happening here, yeah. Atlas. It's really fun stuff but obviously for these guys it's life or death because the relegation tournament is looking really tricky and life as a pro gamer is all about being in the lck right now it's looking tenuous even though bbq has players that i think everyone in twitch chat knows and loves yeah and we all want them to stay in the lck as well we are going to be starting on the side of bbq as we have a look at the lineups we'll see whether it's going to be trick playing or whether bono is going to poke his head back into the lck but nope going to be Trick once again. See whether they can have a better performance. There were sort of snippets of excitement in their last couple of series. They weren't able to get across the line, but there certainly was some play that warranted some excitement. We'll see whether we can get more of that here against Kongdu Monster, who is obviously lesser opposition than that of a Freaker in KT. And honestly, with BBQ, it feels like the season kind of slipped away from them. Like they had it in their grass and lost it because they beat Kingzone Dragon X, one of only two teams to beat Kingzone. The yeah. only team to beat them after the first match, where of course Kingzone went down with Rascal on the lineup both games. And then they beat SKT, so they've beaten big teams. It's unfortunately their results against the bottom of the teams, Atlas. They lost 0-4 to MVP over two best of threes. They haven't been able to beat their competition around the bottom. They need to beat Kongdu Monster, who of course are already condemned to be our 10th place team for the third spring in a row. They have their own selection issues. 
in yeah. the jungle. It will be raised. The only player they've picked up and even a single game win on, as Yujun sadly hasn't been able to get off the mark. Yeah, he's zero and about a million, I think, as far as the losses are concerned. 11 match losses in a row, and only two of those were actually 1-2 losses as well. So only two game wins over 11 matches. It's just not a happy story. Actually, you haven't updated your stats. It's 12, Atlas. It's oh, 12 God. losses in a row. Oh, I just couldn't count very well. Yeah, that's, that's, that's understandable. That's straight up. That was just too many red marks I know. on the screen. And sadly, you'd think for the team also. You know what the sad part is, Atlas? It well, I mean, it what do you mean the sad part? It's all sad part. But the sadder part, the oh, saddest God, okay. part is they probably don't remember how many it was. It yeah. all blurs in when they've only picked up two game wins. Not even in a game one. They haven't won a game one in ages, Atlas. We can't even fit them on the screen because the two and two record they had at the start of the season is now 10 matches ago. It has been a struggle unparalleled with Kongdu Monster right down there with unfortunately Spenu and some of Kongdu's own performances in the past, whereas BBQ, They've just never been able to get it together. You can see for KDAs, they're not bottom two. In terms of talent, you look at the players and they don't feel like bottom two. But this is the reality they live in. If they beat Kongdu Monster, they are very likely to avoid relegation. If they don't, they will be in the relegation tournament. That being said, they are pretty good at beating Kongdu Monster as far as history is concerned. Of course, not a lot of summer reading there because Kongdu Monster doesn't like being here no. in summer. That's not exactly what they want, nor do they like picking up MVPs on anyone other than Raze or Edge. Of course, this is a bit of a skewed graph because there's only eight game wins for this team, so not a lot of MVP points to throw around. No, but skewed graph is the sad thing. They literally have five starting players here and Yujun and only two of the starting players have reached MVPs. Raze is one of the people who's been subbed out. Edge is the only player who's played every match that has a single MVP in Seoul. For so long, the crown jewel of Kongdu Monster. Turns out those jewels right now are looking like they're going to be a bit cut rate, Atlas. They're not seeming to yeah. be the top flight jewels you need. We're going to compare probably the two best performers for BBQ and Kongdu Monster on the season, respectively. Edge really wishing that the Zoe nerfs haven't come through. Now the rebuff is there and she's of a lower power level, but his ability to team fight on Zoe does line up with the new maybe Lich Bane focus that a Zoe would have. So I'd love to see Edge roll the dice and show us a Zoe game with Tempt. It's been a very sad time with Azir, not about his own play, but largely around the team it's around so him. It's so depressing. It's so depressing because his Azir to look at is actually fine. Yeah. And then they just always seem to lose apart from that one game. And I'm glad that you brought up the Zoe because I think this is really important in this matchup especially because Tempt has been another one of our performing Zoe players at the same time. So could become a contested pick if someone goes for it in potentially the first game and performs. Probably going to be a Swain though somewhere or the other unless it's banned yeah. away as the fans now need to decide their fate. Let's see if the fans decide if BBQ or Kongdu Monster Oh, we got some chicken win. fans back at home. And that means three quarters of fans think that BBQ most likely will lift themselves out of the relegation places. And I would have to agree, given the schedule, you have to think that BBQ are more likely, but MVP can throw the biggest dagger in the works and deny <laughs> playoffs from SKT and also condemn BBQ to relegation in our second series. So it's a two part feature guys. Usually you tune in for one match, the one you want to see and you go home. Today you want to see both because the story is only written when the final Nexus explodes on today's action. Yep. BBQ versus Kongdu into champion select for game number one. We'll see whether the bands are going to change around here as that is going to be the most hilarious band that I can see because it's uh, Edge's most played champion, yes, but he still hasn't found a victory on it. And the rise is going to go. Azir also... <laughs> Not exactly win rate as uh, Temp is going to have that one banned away from him, but good respect from Kondu because he hasn't looked too bad. And it's one of those awkward games where, you know, if you're asking the coaches when you have two teams that aren't winning, what do you ban? To some degree, you can go to, you know, the, the win rates and say, oh, obviously it's the Alistair from Secret. He's 4-2. and two. They don't pick Alistair when it's up because they go for Tom Kench. That's a very bad record for Secret to peel for Soul. That's their usual game plan, is to play around Soul. You notice a Jin ban on blue side, yeah. one of Soul's traditional non-hyper carry picks. This also further condemns Kongdu, or at least encourages them to go for a hyper carry scaling comp. And if they lose the early game from there, it's not going to be able to be put to much bear. So that's what BBQ are thinking, banning away the Jin. So far, it's just high meta stuff from Kongdu Monster. We'll see if there's any targeted things towards BBQ. And there is a targeted thing. Ignar, the resident playmaker, he will play Rakan. 
even when Zaya is not available. So they ban away the Rakan, and I feel like BBQ and Afrika are the two teams where you ban Rakan, respecting their playmaking support. Yeah, exactly. But Olaf is available, Sion is available, Galio is also available, and despite the fact that he has copped a bit of a nerf to those Winds of War, it was uh, BDD showing us that he's still pretty ridiculous getting an MVP yesterday. Speaking of, Olaf is that's available. Exactly. Like, so. That was the first on the list, and that's just going to be picked up straight away. Means that Roach should be able to grab this flex pick Swain, which is so coveted on the red side. Yeah, it still is going to be power for power, but I think Olaf trumps almost any champion. Yeah, look at the bands here. I would rather Olaf ban than all six of the champions that were banned because <laughs> he is ridiculously strong, but there are ways around him. And if they can't play around an invading jungler, we know that Zac, teamfight-wise, is going to have a very happy time. So Hongdu already have two very, very tanky people. So if you get to the second round and don't see an AD carry, you best be banning hyper carries because Soul is ready to go. Well, everyone's flexing as well. If this Scion is going to be locked in, BBQ will have flex options of their own. I find it interesting that the Skarn is banned instead of the Olaf if they were going to pick the Zac, though. I just feel like that's a little bit ridiculous. You have that interaction with the Impale that's so good with Let's Bounce. I just feel like that would have been a better choice. But look... Kongdu, they might have a plan here as the Scion is, of course, going to be locked away. It's also sometimes the next level where if BBQ first picked the Swain and you don't want to play Olaf, what do you do? Yeah, so I, I think guess. It's one of those weird next level scenarios. BBQ is going to look for lane priority. I love the Caitlyn because they know the Kongdu monster wants to play Hyper Carry. They haven't been able to pull off the Ezreal draft, so you're expecting a Hyper Carry from Soul. Why not go for Ultra Lane Dominance? And it's a lane that Trick can play around because it will have pressure. And Ooh. Kongdu Monster are actually going to go for the Ezreal in this case. So they see the Caitlyn and the Olaf, and they decide to be a little bit more respectful. They don't go for Kog'Maw. They don't go for a Jinx. They lock in the Ezreal. This is all about timings. And sadly, Kongdu playing to the right timings has probably been the biggest weakness of their performances so far in the LCK. Well, the good thing for the support pool here is that we've got so many flexes in the solo lanes that there are a lot of champions that are going begging as far as those options are concerned. Camille, for example, is going to be banned away. Could just be Scion in the top lane, but the respect has to be given because Temp could be picking up that Scion in mid. And Roach will probably lock in one of Orin or Nar. That's kind of how he usually responds. And or Gangplank, you... because he's still available. That's true. The Gangplank is a Not possibility, but we back. banned away. It's one of those things that denies the flex here and... You want to just pick the safest laner into a potential Scion of both the Nar and the Orin for different reasons would be very, very possible. I'll see the Brom ban here saying, hey guys, we're going to pick Orin. That's what it means, Atlas. Yep. No, I figured that out. I just didn't think it really needed much of a follow-up <laughs> because Brom gets banned and I'm like, yeah, fair enough. Last ban here for BBQ though. Let's see whether they're going to dip down into the support pool here is the Alistair will be taken away as well. So Nice laning partner for the Ezreal. So when they move away also, from a hyper uh, carry... You know, like you, you can, mentioned, Secret's a good pick. It's a good pick for Secret, but they haven't been playing champions that really allow Alistair to be played. Then I they lock in... going to say win for a second. Well, you know. They lock in Ezreal, and Ezreal Alistair's been a very common power bot lane. As now, it's the choice of Orn and Nar, the forever choice for Roach, who has played 13 games of Nar, 10 games of Orn, and his next most played is at three. So... <laughs> he knows which way he likes to play League of Legends. We'll Not the way the of the Swain, though. So the Swain will be confirmed into the mid lane. 100% of information now available to BBQ as they pick their solo laner of choice. They can decide where that Scion wants to go. Definitely. Morgana going to be locked in. We'll see whether this is the Glacial Augment Morgana in the LCK. Let's see if it is going to be the support role. That's what you would expect for the Caitlyn. Ignar waiting for his pick to see what we imagine would be, I guess, top or mid, given there's a lot going on here. Yeah. And Scion mid lane against Swain for everybody's tank seems to be happening. Unless... Okay, what would... Okay, never mind. Ignar is just... He's messing with our hearts a little bit here. That's a confirmed Scion top, though. It's crazy he's going to be taking that one and tempt with the Karma in the mid lane, unless they want to do some weird flexing with support positions. Still a pseudo flex there, but... Morgana isn't the most pressure in mid. It's very interesting how the draft has come together for BBQ because they are going for a one-threat comp with Caitlyn, who has a mid-game fall-off. Yeah. Which is uh, usually not what you want to see when it comes to hitting your scalings. However, the Olaf can just take over the game. Hongdu Monster eventually settle on the Leona coming out from Secret. Usually a pick into the Rakan exclusively. But will be taken here because if you lock down Karma or Caitlyn, if you get the Black Shield onto one and then just lock down the other, 
The damage falls off a cliff, and BBQ to me is do you empower Trick to decide the game with counter jungling and also neutral control to get over a mid game hump of damage for the Caitlyn, who really will fall away in anything other than pushing in the mid game. Otherwise, Kongdu Monster, who have a lot of mid game options themselves, might just overwhelm BBQ. Yeah, and I feel like there is bridging here from BBQ. Karma, if she's ever strong, will be in that mid game like you talk about, but that's going to be when Kongdu Monster are really able to get their bouncy castle working. And what was the one comp that they were able to play earlier in the season? It was that bouncy castle engage comp. It's a really fun game, actually. If you sit back and think about it, BBQ want to push waves, push waves, push waves, and invade. And Kongdu Monster look at the enemy team and say, Man, team fighting looks pretty good. We're really happy about where our item breakpoints are at. So there's going to be a lot to focus and zoom in on here. BBQ seem to have a clear identity of wanting to play around Trick and empower him. Trick has been up and down. Needs to be on the up. Remember, guys, BBQ Olivers need to win. Otherwise, they will be in the promotion tournament joining Kondu Monster. Yeah, and finally, they actually have control of their own fate as well. So BBQ Olivers want to make sure that it's MVP that's down there and not themselves. We have a little bit of bias because of the chicken that we may have access to if BBQ stay in the league as well, but this is a tough one. Really hard to call. Exciting compositions. Once again, Raze has the Zac. There are a lot of things that can be achieved now for BBQ and for Kongdu Monster. I want us to harken back. I want Kongdu to go out with a bang, but let's do it. Game number one right now. All right. Well, Dark Binding is going to land already. Secret flashing. They are going to trade it through the flash forward, and that's going to be Ghost picking up first blood on the Caitlyn. Yep, it's 50 seconds into the match. I'm already yelling. Is this LCK, Papa Smithy? This is High Fee Atlas because they know where their comp is strong is in the early to mid game through trick. And that's the thing that happens. If you walk up too far in the river and think you can flash away, there's no getting away from the axe spam. You're dead. So very nicely chased there by BBQ. Different type of playmaker for Ignar. We know he loves the initiation. Finds a champion with range this time in the Morgana. They get the ward, and they now know on both sides the exact pathing of raids. They're picking a limited win condition, but damned if they don't know exactly what they're doing at level one. And they know exactly what Kongu's doing, and that's the best thing that you illustrated here. Raze is going to be caught out every single time, and Trick will know that he can just hang around, wait for that red buff to be taken. He might even just go red to red here. Who knows what's going to happen? Definitely has all of the options. That's what is implied when you have Olaf into Zack. We're on patch 8.5 with Kaisa enabled, guys, if you're wondering. So we're actually further in the future than the NALCS for once in a while. as we, dream. We get the Kaisa available, but not going to be locked in probably till 8.6. When her range gets a little bit buffed. Oh, she's really good on 8.6. Oh, yes. Funnily enough, still not available on other regions. As right now, 8.6 is only in Korea. I believe EU West updating what soon. What was that, Ignar? That was him curving a dark binding. Oh, my goodness. He's actually going to go for the airy here, so not going for the Glacial Augment for the spooky ghost spill that we've been seeing elsewhere. I think for the first time it was over in EU LCS. And I like Temp's a bit gonna be of a jerk. Oh wow, that's fifty gold. He's got all five of them. The dream. Wow, that's uh, that's really depressing for Ray's. Ray's having a real rough time, and he's being discovered absolutely everywhere. That's three of his camps that have had wards on them. In two and a half minutes into this game, that's exactly how you want to play around the Zac. Don't want to let him have a free jungle phase. Keep tabs on him, and look at this trick moving into the river. We'll see whether it's just going to be Rift Scuttler, whether he's going straight forward. Very nice first purchase for the Caitlyn, who picked up a level one first blood. Went for Boots to sidestep the Zenith Blade. Very nice for the laning phase against Leona. Another couple of potions there as oh, well. So painful watching him try to jungle two camps there at level two, but a little bit later in the game. It's a counter jungle from Trick, but now he knows what's up, and it's not interested in overextending. No, he's going to underextend, in fact. As he heads back and just checks out where Trick is, spots that he's doing the crowds with the ward. And crazy. Oh, he's going for the Barbarian skin as well. Is there an opposite to Hyperextend? Oh, hold the point. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. The knockup is going to come in there as crazy. He's going to wander out of the way. I think I'll just return to this. Yeah. There is uh, 
Going to be some options here as Trick will see whether he picks up the aggro. Roach just bouncing around the best he can, but Crazy could be taken down here. Roach grabs for the second blood, sorry, and flashes back underneath his turret. The zombie really wants to get something here, <laughs> but it's not going to work. Trick flashes for it, and he's going to pick up the one for one. But if I'm Roach, I'm saying worth in all chat right now. There was almost no way they could have not picked up a kill there, and yet it got close, Atlas, because the zombie would take the turret and be able to finish the kill, but they have to over-invest here. Crazy gives up his life, Trick has to flash. Definitely not a good look, and a reminder that we are, of course, fighting to stave off relegation in this series. <laughs> yeah, it's, it looks a little bit different to our last series yesterday, but certainly just as exciting. Uh, I, I personally can um, relate to some different levels of League of Legends. Can we call the Olaf Flash an EU Flash? <laughs> Well, I, I guess, I mean, Trick was an EU player, so absolutely. <laughs> oh, there's the flash up finding. Igna, I didn't want to miss that one. There's another axe is going to land. Trick's down here somehow. Zenith Blade is going to mean that Secret's just going on a merry jaunt. And Ghost, he wants another one. Peacemaker's not going to find it as they just give the kill to Trick. He was following up. They wanted to give it to Ghost, but not going to happen this time. And what do we talk about in the draft? It's a draft to empower the Olaf. Give him all the kills. Let him do his best peanut impersonation, go legendary pre-16 minutes, if they can get away with it. Because all their advantages in this game, until Caitlyn hits three-plus items, are going to be around Olaf's invading. So regardless of what happened top lane, ignore it. Love the fact that he just loads up and goes bot lane. And that's the advantage of having a player who's been around the block, Atlas. This guy, yeah. a four-time EU LCS winner, a two-time MVP, has had enough experience to shake off some of the poor performances that he was under criticism for in the past. Nice little stuff from Roach. Yeah, that was never, over the Q. Yeah, there was never any doubt of the pedigree of the players on the side of BBQ, as I'm just going to ignore the action in quotation marks up towards the top side because they're just going to hit each other as often as they can. And yeah, it's more about BBQ not necessarily being able to coordinate just yet. Not quite having the play patterns down, is not having the cleanliness of a lot of our other teams. What does that mean when it is the 18th best of three of the season? You, sh you would have thought they would have got there by now, Atlas. That's the... Yeah. I, I mean, that's what we say after the fifth match. After the sixth match is, okay, yep, there's talent, they'll get there. They never got there, so at some point, and you'd have to say their last series of the season, we have to say that the balance is off. We've noticed it with Trick and Tempt being on different wavelengths at the start of the season, which prompted Bono to come in, but Bono wasn't the solution either. I feel like there's just not the right mix here, and they've had the high highs, but in a double round robin best of three league, they just haven't been able to put together performances with this roster, and something has to change, because relegations, it's far away from you know, the significant investment BBQ put into the yep. League of Legends squad this season. Well, we'll see whether they can go out with a bang and at least keep their hopes alive for a summer split. You're right, it is pretty sad times. When you're losing as much as BBQ were, sort of towards the middle of the season especially, it is hard to keep yourself positive and keep uh, learning effectively. But, yeah, there's only so many excuses that I can make. As the glass half full play by play. I was actually maxing tormented soil, going for the push, push, push. We almost never see this after the gold generation nurse to the uh, Frostfang line of items. So it's actually maxing W. Very interesting. See, you can see it chunking down the ranged minions. Feels like a bit of a KT type strat, you know? Get to the turret and try and get the siege happening very early. But it gets me excited, because again, we looked at the, win the draft and said, very narrow win condition. At least it plays the win condition of push in and let Olaf do whatever he wants in the enemy jungle or to the Infernal. So they get the Infernal because of that pushing advantage as Ray's wants to blow an ultimate if he can. Yep, and the Ragnarok is going to come down. So you're exactly right. Trick is going to use it. Ray's now has a little bit of control here in the jungle, but there's just not a lot to take as Trick might be a little bit greedy and head towards the Krog camp. Not going to be followed by Ray's, however. Ghost throws down a cheeky ult. Does a lot of damage there as the beef, BF sword has already been picked up. Almost said beef sword, and that almost makes sense here, given how early it was. I know you're on a diet, Atlas, so you got food on the mind. <laughs> oh, I certainly do. Oh, I don't God. know if they sell beef swords, but they sound tasty. So I whatever. know. Can we change every item into a food? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that can be our thing. That's your job, Atlas. Mm -hmm. I'm the humble analyst here. So they want to kill Secret. Well, he's going to get Dark Bound, and Ignar is just going to walk forward. Black Shield there, meaning that he's not going to get stunned. And another Zenith Blade, pretty suicidally thrown forward. He knew that he, there was no options for Secret. And Ghost 
One, zero, and two. Even Ignar picking up some kills. This bottom lane from BBQ feeling great. They're feeling great. They're going to keep pushing as well, and we're waiting for the crazy teleport bot lane to unlock Caitlyn to roam, because we always speak about the trough in power that a Caitlyn goes in mid-game. That's only a trough when we're talking about team fights. He has Static Shiv and a BF Sword. Tart's going down, and the harass and the safety of both the net and the traps is very high. That's the game plan they've gone to. So far, they're playing to it, liking what we're seeing from BBQ in the early game, apart from Crazy's over-exuberance around the top lane turret. Yeah, I think, you know, but the idea, the plan was good. You know, the yeah. idea was good. The execution was awful. Oh, Just course. garbage. Absolutely terrible. However, they had the right idea, and you have to say that a lot of the time, my mom tells me it's the thought that counts when I get her a terrible birthday present, so... I don't know if that counts when you're in the relegation tournament, Atlas. Do you feel good then, still? Well, I mean, if they're still going to win the game, uh, <laughs> I guess. Oh, it's tricky. It's tricky. <laughs> we never want to lie to the fans and BBQ. They've got the names. I had high hopes for this team. I thought this team I could be somewhere between five and seven. And so for them to be at most eight and probably, you know, a very real chance of ninth is definitely below expectation. And they haven't really been able to string anything together. It's been the fleet, you know, the very fleeting dreams of beating Kingzone and SKT rather than the 4-0 loss to MVP. Crazy just yells about his wave clearing. Gets a Soul Furnace hit onto Roach as well. Very nicely done. Trick is still monstrously strong and would love to pick up the newly buffed Cloud Drake that we are so excited about. Yeah. In fact, Infernal into Cloud feels Brilliant here. Just gives you more movement speed so you can run around the map and hit people with your more power. All I'm going to say is I'm sure some casters are hipster and like, we were fans of Cloud before. It was bad before, but it's really <laughs> good now. If you're ever going to fight, it was bad. I mean, if you're just going to rotate, rotate, rotate away from it your opponent, it was good for Skarner. It was great. It was good for Skarner to get his ult off, but apart yeah. from that, it wasn't fantastic. Yeah, you're right. You can be hipster about many things, but I think Cloud Drake is off the list, I'm going to say. Okay, fair enough. But I'm allowed to like it now. You are. I'm a huge fan of movement speed. I think movement <laughs> speed's brilliant. Who knows if there's a couple. When there's three, I'm going to let you go full into analysis. I'll play by. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Oh. Crazy going to continue farming things. I don't know why we're even looking at the top side of the map. Just going to be a bit of a farm fest. Being won by Crazy, given the fact that that dive did eventually pseudo work out. Ray's looking for his gank opportunity, and with Control Ward there, he's unseen. BBQ should be playing pretty carefully, and thankfully Black Shield is there. His edge is going to land the snare as Trick runs through. They get the Demonic Ascension. It looks like that's all they wanted. Still a significant cooldown compared yeah. to previous Swain iterations. Quite long, especially at level one. Flash would have been delightful, but Swain can just ult, and uh, the chances of killing him were as the Ikarma and Olaf were zero, so they will rightly disengage. I feel oh. like this is great for Tempt as well, though, because that Demonic Ascension is the only kill threat that Edge will ever have against the Karma. So now going to be absolutely fine, pushing relentlessly in what did BBQ want to do? Push relentlessly. At the end of the day, against a Cleanse Flash Karma, I think anything could happen in the 1v1 and it would be impossible for Karma to die unless the turret was doing a significant amount of damage. Well, Edge did just hit him with his full combo, in quotation marks, <laughs> and did an Inspire's worth of shield damage. I mean, he's got mostly gold spent on mana. So, yeah. at the end of the day, damages, high base, but uh, not registering through the Merc Treads. So I imagine Edge is going to take a lot of inspiration from the build coming through from good old BDD yesterday, going for the similar build into the Abyssal Mask. We'll see whether he tower dives quite as much as BDD did yesterday as well, because that was certainly exciting. So far, Trick has gotten everything he's gone to. Picked up a Drake, picked up two kill involvements, three kill involvements, including the assist, and now we'll pick up another neutral. This is what BBQ have picked for. We've seen a lot of teams this season pick comps that have the same spirit of BBQ, but they've been mis-executed. We saw famously KT Rolster versus Kingzone in the first round, Robin, where yeah. KT picked Galio, Caitlyn, Braum, and were pushed in and lost. And that was you know, an examination of how not to hit your win conditions. So far, BBQ have been staunchly playing around the Olaf. And again, good to see. It could be turned around. Well, Flash is going to be expended here He's as Tarot Acro is shots. picked up. Yeah, exactly. Dark four. Binding flies through. And yeah, that's four. That's going to be a very close to dead secret. And lane control goes immediately over to BBQ. Raze has to stay down here. What is the Olaf doing? He's actually coming down to assist to try and go for the 3v3. Is Ignar getting very high fee. Dark Binding going to go wide. That time it was optimistic anyway. 
but lane control is what BBQ are playing for down here. Everything's still working towards those win conditions, even able to kill the ward. Brilliant. If you guys want to follow at home with the checklist, what you want to do here if you're BBQ is to take the Drake as soon as after it, after it spawns and then contest the control ward you see next to the Ezreal icon in the bot lane because it's all about actually breaking the turret around 15 to 16 minutes when the static shiv is available on the first back for Ghost is when you want to start rotating through the Caitlyn. So those are the win conditions they're going for and Hongnu Monster are aware of this and that's why you see them contesting vision around the scud. The really cool thing is that BBQ's comp, yes, has all of those things going for it, but also it can be a get behind the Caitlyn comp at the end of the game yes. as well. So they are moving towards a late game win condition as well as having a lot of options as far as Siege and everything that you were talking about in the early game. I just feel like it's super balanced in a way that a lot of other compositions aren't. And Caitlyn gives that to you, having this lull rather than anything else. Secret though, another Zenith Blade another to death. his death, and that is going to be it. Trick picks up the kill, and we like it. The Leona of old is coming out in this game where she can only go one way, doesn't have the Rakan and Zaya to hold down, sadly. Has been to the tune of four of the five deaths. They're gonna try and push mid lane to punish this. And BBQ rotating forward, taking advantage of Secret's exuberance on the Leona. See how much turret damage they can do. It's gonna be a lot. Yeah, I think they should be able to get it done as Ghost happy to tank up the damage, but Raze is gonna get in here. Having a black shield is really handy. It means that Ghost was playing super far forward. Even the Rift Herald Almost able to take down that turret yet again. And another minion wave if that goes down. I think BBQ should be able to grab that turret if they want it. Yeah, Raze falls really low, but seems like Ghost and Ignar are about spending their gold rather than going straight to the Drake. So can't contest Vision, take the Drake, and spend their gold. Those things can't happen at the same time. So like we mentioned, the pushing build is now complete for the Caitlyn. They haven't quite crashed a turret, but the push is on for them. And Omni Monster, it's all about scaling. And you know, to respond to your point, where you're talking about a very balanced comp from BBQ, it's balanced in a way in that the early game, very powerful. The late game, pretty damn powerful. But the middle, Atlas, the middle yeah, well, is not is the thing, balanced. Yeah. The balance doesn't actually go there. There is still a trough. The mid game is going to be outclassed by two item Ezreal and also, honestly, Edge with an Abyssal Mask and whatever else he can piece together. There is still going to be that big window for Kongdu Monster to move into Ascendancy. But I understand what you're positing here, but two item Ezreal is something we always talk about. Super cheap build has gone for the Trinity Force this time. It means the oomph of the two items is even higher. Yeah. And I guess what I'm saying is that if they don't manage to snowball the early game to a mid game victory potentially, because you can get super far ahead with a comp like this, despite losing this second Drake, Cloud is going to go down for Kongu, giving Raze a little bit more movement speed around that jungle. But yeah, if they're able to get themselves super far ahead, then that's great. But if they're not able to close out the game and still get an advantage, the late game still looks okay. Yeah, there's a fallback pattern that probably wouldn't have been there for this comp on patch 8.4, where if yeah. that mid game led to a Baron for Kongu Monster, you'd probably just straight up lose because of the power of the Bannon. That's been dialed down in patch 8.5, no longer stacking buffs with the Hand of Baron and also the Banner of Command. So there is definitely a glimmer at the end, but losing the mid game onwards can be very, very painful. Still, we're talking mostly in theory, a Cloud Jake was picked up by Kongdu. They're feeling very good about. BBQ still looking to break that first turret and very frustrated that mid lane is still up on the map. Yeah, Secret been throwing a lot of wards into this top rush, giving Ray's entrance to this bottom lane. Ignar takes a lot of poke, actually, from Solon with Black Shield now on cooldown. BBQ playing very respectfully and moving their way back. Elastic Slingshot not going to come in as that was an odd ultimate coming out from Secret, but they're still able to grab the kill. That was a very strange passage play. They did get the kill like you mentioned, so we'll go results orientated and say good job. But uh, BBQ will not be losing their turret for this. Tempt is already on the room. Yeah. Matching his way down here. Ray's still manning this three man. They're going 1 1 3. That mid lane has to be defended. So, Trick and Ignar will see whether they can actually do some work here as far as the wave clear. Ignar will have another puddle that he can pop down. And turret dive here is not guaranteed. Yep, Black Shield going to be flashed out of the way of the stretch. Armstrong, and now Ragnarok has come down. Really good. Sidestep there from the ult coming down from Sol, who's trying to get out the red buff. Not going to be enough to take him down and trick. Going to be the first casualty. Crazy, just a little bit too late. As now Tempt, he's moved in. Should have a Q at least to be able to grab the kill onto the Zac. Now Crazy wants to get in there. Sol, he's backing. Does have a control ward. As, oh, that was a cute little roar of the Slayer. Could have been an option, but doesn't actually find him. 
They actually end up losing more here for to the side of Kong Monster. They invested a teleport, but they also lose control of the bot lane. Caitlyn and Morgana can push in. And BBK are gonna push through the mid lane as well. So potentially when it comes to structures, and take a very deep disadvantage. With Swain showing up full health, that won't be in the mid lane. But BBQ can push up this second wave. We'll see how respectful they are. So much standing gold for BBQ, but not quite the completions, unless they can get this turret here. Yeah, and they really need to as well, because Sol now has oh. the items that he wants. Oh, Ghost, he really wants to find it. There he goes, but Stopwatch was picked up at security, but Traps gonna be armed, and that's going to be the first star of blood going down. That's so sad. At least we now know that Trap Speed Stopwatches every time on the yep. Rift. Zoni is always a double-edged sword against a Caitlyn, so nicely thought there from Ghost. Realized after the first headshot crit with the Shiv that he could actually kill the Ezreal. They get the kill, they get the first turret. Gold st lead starts to bring, and you see that they, we know there's a mid lane turret, less than a thousand, and a 50% HP top lane turret. This is the time for the standing gold to go completely to the side of BBQ. Yeah, and a 3,000 gold lead is going to be where it's at after that first turret goes down, as well as Sol dying to what was just all-out aggression from Ghost and Ignar. It's nicely done, but this was going to be the turnaround option for the Kongu oh, Monster Temp. team as well, as Temp really wants this turret. Black Shield comes in. No kidnap for you, Raze, as now everyone from BBQ is going to turn up. Another stopwatch was just not exactly what you wanted. As Secret is going to fall down, they might be able to continue pushing as Ultimate flies forward. And this is the snowball that we were alluding to earlier on, if they can get so much of this gold around the map. The trick is so powerful. He's super tanky and high level early in the game. Happy to walk up. That's why they get a bit more damage. Turning on to Ignar, but definitely not counting the cooldown of the Black Shield, because it's back up by now. Yeah, the Black Shield is so strong against Zack as well, who wants to get all of that CC happening. A little bit unfortunate, but really great play out from Igna on the Morg. Morgana supports really picking up in other regions, and the NALC, I saw a lot of it. Great answer to one particular meta champion, the Rakan. Has yeah. no options to chain CC. The Black Shield is there because, of course, it doesn't have burst magic damage. Burst through the Black Shield, so we may situationally see that. It was a great interview with uh, Invent Global with Gorilla very recently, uh, just after their win yesterday, where he talked about the fact that range supports after the Aftershock nerf could definitely see some play. We're now seeing the Morgana in this game. We could see more going forward. Melee support still a very situationally powerful, especially because one of our most common comps is either Galio or Scion. Now or potentially now Nocturne as well. I'm like, talking about, but mostly the mid laners, right? Yeah. The Galio, the Scion, the Swain, the three tank and hyper carry comps. But as we start to diversify away from that, the range supports have a place as well, which is kind of heartening because range supports have been well out of the meta all of Spring 2018. Yeah, I actually like that you bring up mid lane because I didn't think about that quite as much because the Aftershock nerf didn't really affect our junglers, as you can see. Ray's more than happy to pick that one up on the tanky Zac, but did certainly uh, affect the support, so. Basically, when it was a 20 second cooldown, it was basically every trade rotation you're getting Aftershock now at yeah. 35. It's every other, which is a pretty significant nerf to the laning phase, and it means that range becomes stronger. Speaking of range, the double range bot lane of BBQ have crested the three outer turrets, and Hongdu will now answer with one in the bot lane. The next step in the play, if you guys have been following at home, they to find a way to get on the Baron. Very hard actually to get Baron against Red Side Swain because he has such oppressive range on his W that he can check it in a non-committal way all the time. It might as well be a Hawk shot, given that it's really strong in the Baron sneaking denial. You can just wander up, chuck it in there. You say wander up, it has such immense range that you could be doing basically anything. Yeah, you just need to just He's step near the You need Raptor to not camp. be in your own base. Yeah. <laughs> what is it, like 3,500 range, something like that? I don't even know the number. I just know it's many Teemos. <laughs> 3,500 sounds like a lot of Teemos. So I'm just going to go with it. I want to assume that I'm right. Ooh, the second Cloud Drake. The dream. We haven't oh. had three Cloud Drakes in the LCK since the buff, so we're very excited. Look at all that movement speed. Oh, oh not an Inferno. Oh. Come on. So unlucky at BBQ. Yeah, I mean, at least... I mean, Kongu picked up the, the first Cloud Drake, so that we would have needed a whole bunch of them. <laughs> First, uh, first Inferno was very early in this game, so it should be a five Drake game, which is fun. And Tempt has played with his build. Look at this, our first Morella Nomicon as yeah. a second item on the Karma, basically saying, we want to fight early. We know Caitlyn's not that useful yet, 
Why don't we go for a burst Karma and try to bridge to the Caitlyn better? Cool to see, and it adds the Swain very well, of course. Yeah, another Inspire coming in here as Tempt avoids at least the W damage. It's not too much of a worry. He's just going to pop himself back. And yeah, I like that a lot. Helping with creating a bridge for this uh, Caitlyn that barely even needs one. It is also Zack and Swain. So when it comes to healing reduction... Good idea. Very yeah. nice idea. Someone has to go there, and Caitlyn wants to focus on double zeal. Doesn't want to pick up the Executioner's Calling just yet, so for multiple reasons liking it, as Ghost puts three orders into a Control Ward and is very frustrated he doesn't ex escape with any gold. Yeah, unlucky. Speaking of gold leads, about a thousand gold, but given that Ezreal's over two items, you would not necessarily say there's a meaningful lead for the Caitlyn over the Ezreal. Problem is, the map control that you need to make two item Ezreal work is not there because everything else has gone the way of Olaf and friends on the side of BBQ. So they're not able to wield the Ezreal very well. BBQ haven't overstepped in any meaningful ways, so they've been pretty d respectful when it comes to getting map control. And, and now it's all about that Baron vision, Atlas. Yeah, and he had those two items when he unfortunately fell down to that, uh, that stopwatch play, meaning that wasn't able to capitalize on when the Ezreal immediately got strong, which was about six minutes ago. There's actually no wards for the Nara to come into, so the Nara is way out of position. They have no wards on the map. Yeah, that's the Solar Flare just being completely avoided. Tricky's got the Ragnarok available, and there's no turret anymore. It's Edge. It's his turn to throw down the stopwatch, but he explodes. Good God, that damage from the Reckless Swing is insane. We've got some more Bloblets on this map, and they're going to be cleaned up all too easily. It's a double kill for the Olaf. Trick having a pretty brilliant game right now. And BBQ bulldozed through mid because Kongdu Monster doesn't even have a ward around the turret at all. There was nowhere for the Nara to come in. Usually you have the safety of threatening a teleport when the Nara is playing the side lane. We actually knew that the situation was even better for BBQ. They turn onto a Baron and this should be a free one for the side of BBQ. Yep, all too easy. Three items on the Caitlyn coming up right after this as well if they want to go back home. True Shot Barrage comes down, but it's Temp getting over the side. Soul trying to flash, trying to heal, trying to Arcane Shift. Not sure whether he can do it. That's going to be Airy picking up the kill for Igna. They get everything here. Nice of them to stop DPSing when the... Ezreal ultimate the two-shot barrage, the only way a steal could come in. Remember that at this time, there is no wards. The closest ward is actually next to the Baron Pit, on the left of the Baron Pit. So, Nara can't get there. He can't walk up in this scenario. Love the oh, chaining no. onto Edge, who has to deal with double trap and also a decimating smash. Worst day of his life. Ray's jumped into the decimating smash as well. As he just got slammed down. It was like an <laughs> alley-oop slam dunk that he threw himself into. Would you call it a space dunk? <laughs> No, I called it bad. Wow. Yeah. It was not a good time. We always try to uh, control our vocabulary when we're referring to some of these games down the bottom of the table. Ignar gets the blue buff. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I didn't mean necessarily a bad choice from him. It was, it was a bad situation to a be A bad outcome. In. Yes. Yes. It wasn't B, I think. It's not me. Ray's is going to set himself up hey, now on the bottom side here. of the map. Oh, no. It's we're going to call that Bannon Delicious Chicken. Oh, no. That's what it is. Well, the free chicken was available today, Atlas. I saw it. Did not partake in it. Yeah, neither did I. All right, delicious chicken. Is it going to ravage through the base of Kongu Monster? I hope so. Like it ravages through other people's waistlines. It's going to be taken down at least this inner turret. Ghost running forward. The Inspire now being put on top. This is what this comp can do. 27 minutes is pretty early as another Solar Flare lands, but Black Shield is so strong. Ray's no passive, has to flash to get himself out of the way. And now Kongu Monster just have to watch as their base is torn apart. Inhibitor should be going down next. Not a lot of options. The Secret does make his way forward, but just taking so much damage. The head bump comes in as the kidnap happens onto one. But is this going to be enough? Demonic Ascension from Edge, but he's just not tanky enough. Ghost explodes in with a static shift proc. Inhibitor should be taken. Ultimate going to be used onto Soul just to take him down to half. And BBQ, it looks like they want to keep oh. moving. What the heck was that damage? 10,000 gold leads worth of damage, Atlas. The trust fall fails. We did see the flash away from Caitlyn, not trusting in the Black Shield. But the blue buff for CDR means the Black Shield's there every time they try and engage. And BBQ do win, even with their creative mid-game comp. Yep, the Nexus is going to be taken down. Even a cute stopwatch on the fountain. That was not even close. And BBQ, they definitely do not want to be relegated today. Now, if they win this match, MVP will have to upset SKT, or MVP will be going down to relegations. First sighting, though, 
great play from BBQ. You look at the draft, the sort of draft they would have struggled with at other points in the season. They fire at the right time. Kongdu Monster, unfortunately, not able to actually make something of their two-item Ezreal. And a very well-deserved victory and a well uh, played victory for the side of BBQ. Yeah, and I felt like the drafts were both good on either side, but it was just so well executed by BBQ, understanding exactly what they needed to do in the early game in order to make the mid game approachable for their composition. Because otherwise, it would have been Kongdu sitting back if they had some turrets left over, no, none of that standing gold going down. They could have had a real push in that stage of the game. It's the first time all season they said, Trick, you're the one. Take the reins, you're driving the train. We're going to set up entirely around our invading jungler. And Trick said thank you very much and ran away with the early game. It was all decided through that, and by the end, they were just dotting I's and crossing T's. Too easy for BBQ. Yep. Black Shields also need to be mentioned. I mean, both of our Koreans coming back from Europe played a brilliant game of League of Legends because the Morgana, just the pick in general, was fantastic. This time around, it's also very ballsy to go for the, the puddle start as well because you don't have a lot of lane pressure. Still did it, relied on the Caitlyn having that first blood, that first invade was genius as well. A lot of options. Actually took it level two, but got that level two extremely fast after the first blood experience that they gained. Maxing Tormented Soil and Pro Play, something you almost never see, but fit with the comp. And the fact that it had so much internal consistency makes me put the big thumbs up. It was well played and well orchestrated by BBQ. Yep, there was just one dive on the top side of the map that you're going to ask questions about, but otherwise everything was good. Game number two, can it be just as good? Or will Kongdu bounce back is the question that we have now. And we're going to find out right after this short break.